Hi, I'm Peter Saffin, the CEO of the Mathematical Association of Victoria, and I'm here to tell you a bit more about our VC revision program. Each year, MAV produces a very successful VC revision package for students in methods, specialist and further mathematics. Our program is self-paced, interactive and delivered online through our learning management system. This program has received extremely incredible feedback and is jam-packed with useful information, advice, hints and tips for exam success. Never before have we offered so much value in our VCE program. All courses are delivered, including videos by experienced teachers who are VCAA exam assessors. This means that the information students receive will be the most relevant and up-to-date. The tips are based on where students typically make mistakes in the VCE exams. Furthermore, the courses feature technology videos created by TI and Casio experts to support all students. Here are my top five inclusions. Three to six hours of video content in each course. You'll get to hear where students go wrong. You'll get loads of common exam questions explained and how to solve them. And insights into the VCAA maths exam and how to smash it. Two, you'll get videos from TI Inspire and Casio experts showing you how to solve efficiently and effectively using CAS technologies. Three, you receive a comprehensive book of revision notes, including tips for exam success tricky past exam questions with solutions. Four, assess your understanding with interactive multiple choice quizzes throughout using actual past exam questions and MAV practice exam questions. Five, attend exclusive live webinars with the VCAA assessors where you'll get to ask them questions in real time. We hope you enjoy this program. We know it'll help you. Have a look on our website and see what you think but it's definitely something you need to do your best in VCE. Hello, my name is Raymond Rosen. In this video, we'll look at some specialist mathematics exam advice. Talk a little bit about the syllabus and what's the structure of the exams. Alright, so the Specialist Maths Syllabus Outline. Basically, Specialist Maths is divided into a number of areas of study. What are these areas of study? Well, further trigonometric functions, vectors, complex numbers, calculus, differential equations, mechanics, probability and statistics. Alright, so let's have a look at each one of those in a little bit more depth. What do we need to know for further trigonometric functions? Well, we need to know about the reciprocal trigonometric functions, that's cosec second cot, as opposed to the inverse trigonometric functions, which are r sine, r cos, and r tan. We also need to know the compound and double angle formulae, how to find domains and ranges of these inverse circular functions, simple transformations, and perhaps sketching graphs of all of these. For vectors, Magnitudes of vectors, i, j, k notation. We need to know how to find the scalar product, the angle between two vectors. We need to know how to resolve vectors, find the scalar and vector resolutes. We need to know how to sketch graphs of parametrically defined functions. We need to know how to find um, vector functions and sometimes some of these applications of vectors to geometrical proofs. We need to know how to differentiate and integrate vectors, differentiating the Position vector gives me the velocity vector. Differentiating the velocity vector gives me the acceleration vector. And an application of all of this to projectile motion. Complex numbers. We need to know how to solve quadratics with negative discriminants. We need to know how to convert numbers from rectangular to polar form and vice versa. We need to know how to perform operations on complex numbers in both rectangular and polar form. We need to know how to use Dumas theorem for finding powers and roots of complex numbers. Factorising polynomial equations, understanding what we mean by the fundamental theorem of algebra and the conjugate root theorem, such as for solving polynomial equations. We need to be able to represent relations and subsets of the complex plane, typically as circles, lines and rays. Calculus. 
Once again, all the stuff you need to know is also included in um, mathematical methods, plus of course more. So the standard derivatives, chain, product and quotient are in methods. We need to know how to differentiate the inverse trigonometric functions. We need to know how to find the second derivatives and their applications to finding points of inflection and concavity, concavity. Implicit differentiation, differentiation, different types of integration techniques, including linear, nonlinear substitutions and evaluation of definite integrals. Integrals which sometimes involve the inverse trigonometric functions or integrals which involve expressing the um, integrand into partial fractions. You need to know how to find the graph of the function from its antiderivative and vice versa, and applications of integration to areas, areas between curves, and volumes of revolution. Also, arc length for both the functional form, that's y equals f of x, and the parametric form where a curve is given parametrically to find its arc length. Differential equations typically involve some related rate type questions, verifying solutions to a differential equation by differentiation, setting up, solving first order differential equations. Some typical applications here include growth and decay, radioactivity, Newton's law of cooling, sometimes some beam deflections or some second order differential equations, and basically variable acceleration forms are basically just solving uh, differential equations. Numerical solution of differential equations by Euler's method, as well as finding the slope or direction fields. Mechanics. Topics here are momentum, kinematics, displacement, velocity and acceleration. Newton's laws of motion. Particles acted upon by a system of forces, including, including uh, problems on inclined planes and connected particles as well. Probability and statistics section, linear combinations of a random variable, sample means, simulation of repeated uh, sampling, confidence intervals for the um, mean of a population, hypothesis testing, one and two tailed tests, p-values, and also knowing what the type one and type two errors are. All right, so a little bit about exam one. What happens in exam one? Specialist Maths exam one is designed to assess your skills of typical mathematical concepts without the use of technology. In other words, exam one, you are not allowed to use your calculator because you're not allowed to bring it in. So typically exam one questions you may have seen in sort of textbooks. There won't be sort of too many, many surprises, but you should expect some sort of different questions along the way, but most of them will be questions that you may have seen and done before. So basically exam one, as I said, is to be done without the use of technology. Generally exam one is worth a total of 40 marks. It will consist of nine to 11 questions. You have um, one hour writing time, 15 minutes reading time to do this exam. And this exam contributes 22% to your overall score in specialist maths. The formula sheet is provided and is to be used. And you also get the formula sheet in exam one and exam two as well. So in exam one, what are you allowed to bring in? Well, you're only allowed to bring in basically pens, pencils, highlighters, not liquid paper. Liquid paper, you know, the Tipex, you're not allowed to use that because all the exams are basically scanned and uh, liquid paper tends to jam scanners, so they don't like that. So no calculators, no notes are permitted in this exam, just the formula sheet. So basically some examination vice. Well, you've got your 15 minutes, which is really often plenty of time for exam one. So use the reading time to plan an approach for the paper. You know, if you really like the probability section, you might want to do those ones first but probably just do the questions in order. You know, you don't have to. But as I said, you might want to do some questions that you know, you're most confident in those topics. And so you, know, you can knock off three or four questions in the first 10 minutes and feel really, really good about yourself. Now, in exam one, if you read the examiner's reports, which I strongly suggest you do, students always have problems with not correctly using the formula sheet. For example, in that we might mean, um, you know, if you have to use a quotient rule, 
as in maths methods, make sure you use it correctly. The derivative of the top times the bottom minus the other way around. Not showing steps. Now, in an exam, if a question says show that and it's worth more than one mark, then make sure you really put in some extra steps because um, you, know, you really need to show some working when working is required when questions are worth more than one mark. Don't necessarily have to sort of simplify an answer fully and if you do go on and simplify an answer fully and get it incorrect and that's your final answer, then we'll, you will lose unnecessary marks. So as I said, you don't have to simplify, factorise your final answer in exam one, but often they will ask you to give your answer in a particular form. So you might have to give it in that form, which may require uh, some sort of factorisation. Now, don't cross anything out, because if you cross it out and put a dirty big X through it, the examiners will not look at it. And you might not have had time to do it again. So, you know, make sure you have rewritten a correct alternative or a correct uh, response before you actually cross something out. Because if you cross something out, as I said, they won't look at it, and there might have been something in there that was perhaps worth one mark. Don't make silly mistakes. For example, remember to include the plus C in an integration question. And um, if a question asks you for an area, often questions will say, write down the area. You must give a definite integral from A to B of some function, and you must include the dx, or the dt if it's appropriate for a position or something like that. If you don't include the dx or the dt, the examiners may take a mark off. And it might be simple to say that question was only worth one mark, and you don't get the mark because you don't have that in your answer. Overall, when drawing a graph, make sure you perhaps use a ruler, you know, if you have to draw some asymptotes and they're straight lines. Uh, label the graphs, make sure you label the graphs. Graphs will often say, label the coordinates. Make sure you have them in round brackets and XY. Make sure you include the equations of the asymptotes. For example, you know, you write X equals minus two, VA, vertical asymptote, shorthand, examiners are happy with some uh, abbreviations. Make sure your graphs are smooth and asymptotes are approached. If you're drawing a graph on a restricted domain function, make sure you include the endpoints if required and only draw the graph in the restricted domain. Don't draw it past the restricted domain or for example, negative values of T if it's a time graph. Make sure you use an appropriate scale and an appropriate domain is shown. Overall, Know your definitions. There are quite a few formulae that you need to know, as were mentioned in some of the videos, which are not on the formula sheet. Read your answers, logically, systematically setting out your solutions, indicating your final answer. Must read the examiner's reports. They will give you answers to some of the previous exams and also look for the percentage of some of the questions which were done poorly. Often these questions are repeated or similar type questions repeated the following year. All right, a little bit about exam two. Exam two has got two parts, um, total of 80 marks. Part A contains 20 multiple choice questions, each worth one mark, and part B have got extended answers, each um, sort of part A, B, C, D, worth 60 marks. And students have two hours writing time, but only still 15 minutes reading time for exam two. This exam contributes 44% to your overall total in specialist maths. So we've got the remaining 34%, which has all been completed with all your coursework or your SACs. Now, one of the major problems that I think students do in exam two is that they spend too long on part A. When you're doing lots of these practice exams, think about this. Part A is worth 20 marks. Part B is worth 60 marks. Part A is only 20 out of 80, that's a quarter. You've got two hours. You should only spend half an hour, 30 minutes on the multiple choice. Most students end up spending 45, probably even sometimes an hour on the multiple choice, not leaving themselves enough time to finish off part B questions. So keep that in mind when you're trying to do some trial exams. The multiple choice questions, well, the examiners don't see any working out. The multiple choice questions are marked by a computer. It's a sheet of paper, you know, where you cross the little box for the A, B, C, D, E type thing. 
A correct answer scores one mark, an incorrect scores zero. Marks are not deducted for incorrect answers, and um, if you sort of cross the A and the B and then change your answer, well, you've really got to use a rubber to make sure you rub one of them out. Because if more than one answer, if both an A and a B are selected, then you will be marked wrong. In the multiple choice question, now sometimes, you know, some of these questions um, require some sort of working out. Uh, if you've watched some of these videos, some of the multiple choices are a bit tricky and may require a lot of working out or two or three steps. So you should be expected to do some sort of calculations or use your calculator to get the answer if possible for some of these multiple choice questions. If you're not sure of a multiple choice question, I would strongly advise you to have a guess. Remember, you've got a one in five chance. All right, you might, you might say, oh look, you know, D and E, they're silly, they're definitely wrong. But you know, and then you've narrowed it down to a one out of three chance, or maybe even one out of two. So by all means, have a guess if you're not 100% sure. Don't think I'll come back to that question later on and I'll um, you know, have time to come back to it later and leave it blank. Well, don't do that. Have a guess at this stage because you may not get time to come back to it. Time is really the major issue when I'm working through these exams. All right, so in, uh, in section, in this exam, well, what are you allowed? You're allowed to bring in a approved CAS calculator which obviously has to be used in some of the questions. The answer can't be found without using the CAS. And you're also allowed the scientific calculator. You're also allowed to bring in a reference books. So a reference book, you can bring in the textbook if you like. Once again, pens, pencils, sharpeners, rulers, no liquid paper. Now, just some basic advice about exam two. If you're spending a lot of time on a question that's only worth two or three marks, don't worry about it go on to the next part. Because, as I said, time is the major issue here. If a question says, show that. Now, you know, don't spend too much time trying to do it if you can't. Because even if you can't do the show that, the show that still enables you to go on. Because we're talking about sort of consequential marks here. So if in part B says, show that, then there's a good reason why it said show that is because even if you can't show it, you can still use the information to do sort of parts C, D, E of the question. And often show that do require the next stage of the question to be used from previous parts in show that. When questions ask for an exact answer, well questions always ask for an exact answer. If they don't, then they will say, give your answer to appropriate number of decimal places. So answers to questions assume an exact answer. Decimal answers will not be acceptable if an exact answer is required. Now, an exact answer is something like root three pi over you know, e or something like that. Now, on the other hand, if a question says give your answer to four decimal places and you give an exact answer, then you're also wrong, okay? So, you know, you ought to be careful here. If an exact answer is required and it's only worth one mark, then great, just write down the answer, even if you've got it from the calculator. If it's worth one mark and you write down the answer, great, fine, no workings required. However, if a question is worth two marks and you get the answer directly from your calculator and write down the answer with no working out whatsoever, then you'll be lucky if you get the one mark, okay? So you must show some working in those sort of questions. As before, label your graphs, uh, coordinates, in, intercepts. You might need exact form um, in this sort of questions or if it says decimal places. So pay particular attention when sketching graphs. We hope you've enjoyed the video today and that it's given you a little bit more insight into our VCE revision program. If you'd like to sign up for the program, you can go onto the MAV website and sign up using the link there. For one of the subjects, the cost is $60 and for two of the subjects, it's $100. We do also have a discount available for students who sign up with a group of more than 20. So you can ask your teacher if you'd like to inquire about that, about having a group discount. As we've mentioned, just as a small recap, 
you will be having access to over three hours of videos from VCAR assessors with lots of hints and tips and tricks and lots of common exam questions. There'll also be videos from the Casio experts and your TI Inspire experts on how to use the calculator. We'll also get an amazing book of revision notes and you'll get access to the live webinars at the end of the year as well. So again, if you'd like to sign up, you can go onto the website that is shown on your screen, mav.vic.edu.au and look for the link for the VCE revision program. Thanks for watching.